Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and welcome back to another Lumber Tycoon 2 video. So, since being away from uh, Lumber and playing some other games and having some fun, I have been re-energized. I am ready to get back in here and play some more video games, or play some more Lumber. Okay, just so you know, I was trying to hit E to, to enter the car. That was, that was E right there. <laughs> So last time we got all the blueprints from uh, Wood Are Us, and I figured what we could do now is we can start working our way up from like Shabby Sawmill to the next sawmill and stuff like that, and maybe possibly go get some more, uh, some more things, some more wood. Um, let's see, the next one's the Fair Sawmill, and the last one's the Saw Max One. All right, what's this? That's the Saw Max Two. 2250 and 1100. So, uh, could we get both of these? This is only 1600. Yeah, so we can get this one and we can get the other one. So, let's go ahead and purchase this one first. Yes, we're going to purchase this one. Thank you. And then we're going to purchase the next one. Wait, can we get this one? 2 2. We could have, but we didn't. So let's get the next one. And this is this is purely for aesthetics, uh, not for, it's purely for show. So let's, let's chat, yes, let's go ahead and purchase it. And what I can do is I can open one and I can grab the other, set this one down. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll set these up on the first little little patch right over here. This will be the sawmill area. So this will this will contain all different, all the different kinds of sawmills. So uh, let's see, we, we're gonna need two more after that. So that one should go there. This one should go here. And then the shabby actually needs to go right here. Hold on, why is it not? Can I place right there? Yeah, I can I can place it slightly off the base. It's a little forgiving, not much, but Defaultio did allow it to go slightly off the base. And we can we can come forward a little bit too, so let's move that in right there, like that. We'll move this one in right next to it. This is the Saw Max 1. So we'll need the Saw Max 2 and then the Saw Max 2 XL, which is the next step up. Amazing. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, let's go ahead and max this. It, it is a good idea to give yourself a little bit of room for um, for the uh, adjustments. But as you can see, we can we can adjust. By the way, the, the, the preview thing, the preview wood is finally fixed. It was broken for the longest time. Is that all the way up? All the way up? Okay, good. All right, uh, we kind of need a floor. So I feel like I should move this stuff out of the way and we should go ahead and make a floor. Um, I think I, I already have the blueprints, the, the golden blueprints. So we should be good to just start building one by ones or uh, the big, big floors. So let's go to large floor and that's right in place. Good, good, good. All right. All the way over, just like that. Uh, is that is that one plot? I think that's one plot. One, two, three, four. So there's five by five, right? One, two, three, four, five. That should be good. Five by five here. Should I leave a little place in the ground, like a little a little dirt patch, to show that this is center center I think that would that would be an idea you know it may not be a good idea but you know that's okay <clears throat> I guess the best way to describe it is I have found I found a new game that I really like uh, and I found a new passion that I, I really enjoy and 
I still want to create video games. I still want to program and I'm still doing a lot of bot programming and automations, RPAs uh, for work. So I'm still getting my fix of um, programming, which is, that is one of the great thrills of my life is programming. I know a lot of people think programming is very boring, but it's like solving a puzzle every single time. And I just got a couple of new projects that I'm going to be doing. Oh, come on, get on out of there. Ugh, stuck. Now, I don't think that's going to fit, is it? No, oh, that, that will not fit at all. Actually, will it fit through here? I'm not sure that it's going to fit at all. That might be too big. And I just realized this is a horrible idea because this is going to be planking out. And as soon as it's finished, it's just going to go straight into a blueprint. So that's, that's not good. All right, come on, come on, get in there, get in there. Oh goodness. Well, you know what they say. I, I I don't know. I don't I don't know what they say. That's that's why I was asking you. Do you do you know what they say? Maybe maybe you could tell me. Cause I I because I don't know. But they say it. Whatever it is. Wait, can I can I grab that? Is it grabbable now? It's grabbable, but why is it so tiny? I don't Maybe he fixed the bug? Hold on. Let's see. Oh, oh, there it goes, there it goes. Just as soon as it hit the ground, it's it's done. Okay. Well, that kind of works. So, I should, should be able to chop this in half and put it through the smaller one, right? Or will it, will it fit? I don't. I don't know that it's going to fit. That's not going to fit. That's way too big. All right. So let's go over here. We're going to do the same trick. Can can we do the same trick? Oh, okay. That just kind of spit it out the end. There it goes. There you go. There you go. Okay. Two, three. That's going to take forever. <coughs> okay. That'll, that'll work, though. It'll be a little bit bigger than the one-by-ones like we planned, but, you know, it's all good. And there's no real reason for me to, like be building up walls and stuff. It, it's strictly for uh, for housing reasons, you know? And uh, I hate to say this, but the only way to play Lumber Tycoon 2 anymore is on a private server. And I'm upset that that's, that's the way it's gotta be. But if you go into public servers anymore, like that, there's, there's no stopping the exploiters. It's just, and I'm not giving up the fight. I'm not saying that Roblox won't come along eventually and actually ban people for exploiting, but it's a corporation, you know? And they're they're making lots of money. They, they are publicly traded now. Oh, speaking of which, hold on. Okay, okay, so latest update was on January 8th, Friday, and Roblox is expected to go public in February. Um, Thursday, January 7th, Roblox completed the private funding round, raising $520 million. The round values Roblox at $29.5 billion. $29.5 billion. So yeah, you know what, exploiters? And, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say this very nicely. They don't care about you. That I'm just saying. The amount 
of exploits that are happening on Roblox right now and the amount of money that they're making. Open your eyes, exploiters. Open your eyes, hackers of the world. Open your eyes, non-hackers of the world. That is a huge, huge chunk of money. That's unfathomable. That's a ginormous amount. And don't think for one second that I'm not gonna purchase some stock as soon as it goes public. I mean, I've, I've got my, my uh, bank account lined up and ready to go. I'm going to be dropping some cash into some Roblox stock. Uh, and for those of you that are too young to know what the Roblox stock exchange is, or the, if you're too young to know what stock exchange is in the first place, doesn't really matter um, because you wouldn't be able to purchase any anyway. But tell your parents about it. And if they're, if they're interested in stocks and exchanges and stuff like that, I would highly recommend buying some Roblox stock. Just saying. And then you really could say, yeah, I own a little piece of Roblox. I own a piece of the Roblox Corporation. You know, and I think if you have over a certain percentage, uh, you get a vote on the board, don't you? Or something like that? I, I don't. I didn't read the details. I just know that Roblox is going public in their stock options. What? Mm. Oh, and for those of you who were asking, hold on, I, I didn't even check it. Hold on, are we recording? We are recording. Let me log in here and I will go over to my current stocks. I own a piece of Tesla. Which, by the way, I, I spent 25 bucks the first day and it's already up to 28.74 within a week. Um, over a week's time. It's not doing it's not doing too good, but I mean $25 worth of stock and it's up to $28. It's kind of cool. I mean, I'm not a big investor uh, by any means, but I mean, this was just kind of, kind of to say, hey, I own a little piece of Tesla. So yes, you may own a Tesla car, but I own pieces of Tesla. Um, investing, investing your money for the future is a very good idea, but I want you to understand that investing in stock market is, wait, that's the wrong tree. Oh, dang it, hold on, what am I doing? In investing in stock market versus like an IRA or a retirement account or something like that. And I don't know why I'm talking to you about this. Oh, I remember why, because they don't talk to you about this in like school and stuff. And that's probably something vital that you pr should probably know if you're a young teen who's getting ready to graduate um, high school and go into college or something like that. Maybe, I mean, who am I? I don't, I don't know. I didn't start investing until I was around 35, 35 years old. Yeah, that was dumb of me, right? So you guys say, Code, you're so smart all the time. Yeah, why didn't I have a retirement account back when I was like 25? Just saying. Start saving for retirement now. But it's fine, it's fine. Oh, I did have some really good news from um, the job that I work at. So, uh, I, I don't know if I should release it yet. I can't. We we came to, uh, I, I got a phone call from my boss today and he said some things that um, I had been asking about are going to happen and I will be a remote worker. So um, because of the position that I'm in right now um, with doing the RPA, the bots, the programming on remote and because COVID's been going on, all my projects have been getting done. I've been having a lot of time to sit down and just code like constantly without people walking inside my office bothering me because I used to work help desk. Okay. So everybody that's watching right now, um, when you work help desk, you answer the phone, you, you fix computers, you do stuff like that all day long. I am no longer help desk, but there's a big grain of salt with that. I was always the guy that was help desk. Everybody knows my name. At like 32 different stores, seven different states. That's 22 stores now. 32 different stores, seven different states, and we have a ton of locations. Over, I don't know how many employees. There's a lot of employees, um, but there was uh, seven of us for a long time, and it used to be just three. It used to be my boss, the network engineer, and me. That was it. That was all we had. And I had to do help desk for 
everything. I mean, that's how I got so good at computers really fast within like the first three years of my job. And the amount of knowledge that I gained from the age of 14 up until the time that I took that job, take all of that and crush it down into about a month's worth of learning. That's how fast I, I learned from computers and everything else. It, it's incredible the amount of hackery I discovered and found. Um, and I want to say hackery. I, whenever I say hacking, I'm, I'm talking about technology in general, just knowing code and knowing different ways to get into things and, and do things like incredible. Anyhow, I'm no longer help desk. I'm now the application development analyst, which means I develop programs. I'm the RPA programmer. I'm the, the bot assisted automation person of awesome ninja hackery. There, that's, that's my title. Um, but because I'm able to work remote, it's going to allow me to work remote. So I, I don't, I don't know if I should announce it yet. It's, it's brand new and it's, it's just announced. So maybe I'll hold on to the secret for a little bit longer, but know that good things are coming. And I am, I am super excited because quite frankly, I've said, I've said it before in the past. I've said it in my previous videos. I think it is such a waste of time getting up in the morning, getting dressed and going to work. That's like, no offense to people that, that do that. And people who are early birds and morning people, more power to you. If you get up and you exercise and, and then take a shower and get your breakfast before you go to work or before you go to school, more power to you. I don't do that. I'm a late person. I wait until the last possible moment that I can go to sleep and then just get as much sleep as I can in the five hours or six hours that I'm allowed, you know? But waking up, um, right at the time that it's, it's like time to go to work, I brush my teeth real quick, throw some gel in my hair, and I dial into my computer at work. I am a remote worker, and I'm super excited. So, <clears throat> huge thank you to my boss, huge thank you to his boss who allowed it, and it's, it's basically, it's an agreement in between my boss and me. I'm extremely happy. I am super, super duper, super, super, super happy. <laughs> uh, what do we need? What do we need? What do we need? What do we need? I think that was it. That was that was all I was going to do for this this episode. Should we build a different color here? I think we should. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and fill this in. And what I'll do is I'll I'll make a different wood for each one of the sections and then that way I will know like this is the first one this is the second one stuff like that are, are we gonna have enough I don't know if we're gonna have enough uh oh there's like three more boink there we go okay so then we can take all this and drop it off over here Still don't know which box goes to which one of those axes. I'm confused. I'm probably gonna have to go buy another one, waste more money. It's, re it's really not that expensive. It's fine. All right, and a lot of you are like, Code, how did you get so much money? Uh, go back a couple episodes. I chopped a bunch of ice wood. Uh, this was the base that, uh, how do you have the Roki axe? This is the base that I started the, uh, the speed run with, but because I already had the badges, it didn't count. So we had to say no, no to that one. Whoa, that's cutting the wrong way. Okay, let's just drop that in. Anyhow, <clears throat> that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I forget how calming lumber is. And you guys, you always come up with a lot of suggestions, a lot of things to do on lumber. And it's amazing the, the ideas that you guys have. I mean, you have the time to sit back and look at what I'm doing and come up with the ideas and the concepts of like, well, what if we went down to the end times tree and we built a, a bridge to drive across? You know who I'm talking about, by the way. 
Now, I will tell you for a fact, I have tried to long plank across that bridge before, and it is very impossible to try and drive across the bridge. You can do it. it there, there's the ability to do so, but it's hard. It's super hard because your car will move the bricks. Your uh, physics won't work quite the way that you were hoping. It just, it just doesn't work how you planned. I promise. Okay, we're gonna need to chop this down a little bit. And that's probably way too much wood. I mean, we don't, we don't really need that much wood. Whoa, hold on. Can I do the thing? Whoa, <laughs> nice. <clears throat> now, I wonder I wonder if you could do that next to the shore. Next to the next to the shore. And get uh, get some distance and try and get out to palm wood. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking the axe and I'm turning really fast at the same time that I chop. Oh, that missed. It missed. How did it miss? You never miss. Alright, get down there. B. There it goes. Move. Pull down. B. There you go. Thank you. Now if we do this one. Move. Push down. B. Move. Push down. B. Nice, nice. Can we set this one down to maybe 1.4, like that? Would that be easier for us to chop? Yeah, there we go. We need like what, one, one piece? <laughs> uh, I, may, I may have made a mistake. I may have overcompensated for that one. That's my bad. My bad. Way, way too many. Way too many. <sighs> there have been many times, many times in my life that I've, uh, I've been scared of change. I've been scared of, uh, going through <clears throat> changes in my life. One of them was going to the Marine Corps. That was a very big, scary thing. Graduation from high school was scary. Um, every time I changed bases, or every time I had to move, even if it was moving from one barracks to another barracks on the same base, it was this intense anxiety, overwhelming fear. Um, this is this is kind of hard to talk about. So hold on, let's let's take a moment. Um, let me come over here and I'll chat about this because I think it's it's something that a lot of people go through, and I want you to know that I I go through it too. Um, one of the biggest ones that struck me was um, the night I left Okinawa, Japan. Okay, I was over in Okinawa for two years, and I think one of the reasons that I extended to stay over there was because I was scared of coming back to the United States. Why? I don't, I don't know. You have, I have no clue. But I do remember that stop loss was the 25th of, uh, of July. And my flyout date, the date that I transferred bases was on the 24th. So I was very lucky and got one day so I didn't have to extend or, or have stop loss on me. So I, I was very lucky on that. Um, but I remember the night before I left, um, TMO, the, the travel, the transport marshal's office or something, TMO, whoever they are, they came and picked up all of my stuff, pe packed it up into to boxes, threw it into like this crate, and then shipped it off. And I was left with, my uh, my duty bag, uh, a backpack, 
and and a duffel bag, and that was it. That was all I had. And I remember I was supposed to go to sleep and turn in my my blanket and my pillow the next day to the the corporal and go ship out. I was I was going to jump on the plane the next morning and go. I was up at four o'clock in the morning, sitting in my room, not knowing what to do. I could not sleep. It, the, the thought, the idea that I was changing bases, I was so scared that I would oversleep the alarm clock, that I would sleep in too long, that I didn't get any sleep that night, which caused me to be so tired on the plane that I ended up sleeping on the plane. I, I ended up going to the airport three hours early and basically falling asleep at the gate. And the, the little Okinawan lady, she actually woke me up to get on the plane. So anyhow, fearing change is natural. It's normal, it happens. But giving into the fear and not doing something that could be absolutely extraordinary, you need to get over that one. And it's, it's possible. You can do it. So if you're about to go through some kind of change or if you're uh, experiencing any kind of anxiety like I did, I want you to know that it's perfectly natural. There's nothing wrong with, with admitting to it. But talk to somebody about it. Talk to, like, if you have a journal, write it down in a journal, you know? The, the fear of change should not be a fear that you have to face alone. It should not be something that you're ashamed of or that you want to hide away or keep secret. You know, every, everybody's afraid, afraid of change in some form or another. Some people love it. Some people actually are very excited about it. Ooh. Okay, that's that's very unevenish. There we go. That's nice. That's nice. So, uh, vehicles in the center. Uh, sawmills to this side. Should we purchase some more land? Do we have enough money to purchase more land? Do I have time? Yeah. You know what? We'll purchase another piece of land, and then we'll like next episode, we'll fill this in with uh, the next kind of wood, and we'll keep going. I like it. I'm taking the slow car today. No need, no need to go fast in today's episode. <clears throat> oh, uh, the whole point I was making was I was excited. I'm excited for the move, for for the the change, the the, the difference of change has always scared me, but now that like uh, I. I went to my boss, I told him what we were thinking, and he said, yeah, we'll, we'll try and make it work. Let me talk to my boss. That was six, seven weeks ago, and I was nervous then asking about it, but at the same time, I'm now so ready to just be 100% remote all time. That's awesome. Uh, 6,000 for that one. So it was 3,000, 6,000, next one's what, 12,000? So, but that's it for now. Thank you everyone for watching this episode of Lumber Tycoon 2 with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things that I'm supposed to call out at the end of the videos like a good YouTuber does, but it's your choice. If you want to, go for it. If not, that's cool too. Even if you hit that dislike button, it's still showing me attention and you were still here and watched to hit the button. So thank you for being a fan. Hit the like button if you could, just, you know, for stats, but that's it. Uh, I love you guys. I love your comments. I love coming in here and recording for you. I love coming in here and playing anyway, but there's a lot of people that wanted to watch this, so I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great night. We'll talk to you soon. Outro.
want some new merch? Check out teespring.com. Outro.